because I have my... <laughs> Look over there, gang. All right, welcome to Season 7, Episode 33, of a show I like to call Walking and Talking with Plant Biologist in Montana. It's a fairly niche show, but we own it. Come with me, Dave. Dr. David Sands. Tell me... Out to nature. Let's go into nature together. Keep talking. Describe so, this environment as best yeah, you can. I will. Um, I'll describe the environment and our initial meeting. We met here about 10 years ago. We're at this place called Silver Tip. It's a ranch in Montana um, in Yellowstone. Absolutely beautiful. And, dude, I was already into science before I met you. And then you gave me a list of books to read, um, especially about DNA and the genome and all the Ridley books and so many other books. You've really changed my life. Because um, there's so many books out there, and it's nice to have a, a curator like you that knows what he's talking about and has bizarre interest. Look at that. That's a dandelion. Way up here, imported from... Central Europe somewhere. What's that do thing doing here? And it's down low. It's not up high. It's not reaching to the sky. Because anything that reaches to the sky in here gets eaten by a horse. So it gets impacted and down low. How does it do that? How did it learn that so quickly? Well, it's like my students. They either learn or they die. And with Jack Horner here, we talk about evolution. We talk about selection. And any species worth its salt, and all species are, they have to contend with changing conditions. They have to have genetic flexibility. A bacterium with 3,000 genes only turns on at any one time, maybe 300. What is this? How which does, ones do they turn on? How does it know which ones to turn on? How do they, do they know? Or is it kind of like a videotape that we make that worked? And all the videotapes we made that didn't work don't survive. And that videotape, the tape is DNA. And it can be turned on and turned off in a very convenient way. They have stoplights in front of the different genes. And a little error in the stoplight is all you need for a dandelion to grow low instead of high. So it's that built-in flexibility that it's not the genes that count as much as the stoplights in front of genes. Stoplights that should be meaningful to all of us for to grab onto DNA and be a stoplight and turn it on and off. Of the 3,000 genes, what 300 do you turn on? There's a single protein that looks just like your right hand and your thumb of the right hand that grabs on the DNA has a zinc finger. Oh, and what happens? There's not enough zinc in the environment. Species go crazy. Mm. They don't have stoplights. They, they may flicker or something. They don't turn on and off. They may flicker. And a scientist that I know found that low zinc in somebody's diet can lead to high violence. So the more we understand the stoplights, we can possibly reduce violence, raise serotonin, do all these things. Oh, I think I love GMOs if they're written in DNA with a heart and humility. Love it. What a mensch. <laughs> You see why we do this little nature talk? That's yeah. all it is. It's I get just it. a little nature talk. Did they 
there was a study, wasn't there, of like high security prison in Chicago or something, some of those violent offenders, and they checked sure. their blood, and they were, just had very low zinc. And then they gave them zinc supplements, and they calmed down a little bit. Uh, 72% calmed down. Bill Walsh, Journal of Behavioral Psychology, about 10 years ago. And I had a meeting with him, and I said, gee, it's funny, because when I look at the world map of where zinc is and, and where it isn't, Afghanistan, Pakistan, Syria, Iraq, Iran. And is there no zinc there? Turkey. Because it's, there haven't been glaciers there in a long time to bring down the minerals? Whatever your hypothesis, there's no yeah. zinc there. Yeah. And so all you have to do is tell farmers your wheat will grow better with more zinc. We can yeah. stay under the radar. We don't have to get into all this cultural and yeah. human human interpretation of right. what we're trying to do. Stay under the radar. And crops do grow better with zinc. Oh, yes. Yeah. Like double. So it's in their own best interest, the primary and secondary way. Yeah. And it's maybe a dollar an acre. All right, Dave, you're leaving us soon. Your helicopter's on the way. I'm sorry. I'm out of here. You. Yeah. Sort of. <laughs> oh, 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 recite your poem. Do you have it memorized? Here, I got it right oh. here. This is Bob, by the way, special guest star here. <laughs> Hi. He's the man with the poem. He's the character that walks into the scene. He's got to read a poem. the poem. No, he's not. He a good poem is read by somebody else, not the writer. Ah, uh, all those animals, taximals, looking down at us in the great room at Silvertip. No doubt are reflecting on what they have seen and heard over the last century. And come on, Dave, what is the punchline, the take-home lesson of all this reflection? I will give it a shot. Let thinking be thy medicine. Bob, I'm frankly glad that he did. <laughs> Good riddance. Yeah. Stop being so entertaining at night. Stop with all the stories, the fun facts. Yeah, stupid, stupid pseudo intellectuality. Like, I mean, come on. Stop with more poetry. <laughs>